Now that we've got a basic header for our profile, we're going to move on to building out the profile button. Note that when we're looking at another user's profile, not the currently authenticated users, we're going to see here a follow button or an unfollow button. But for ourselves, when we're on our profile page, we should have a button that says edit profile. So when we click on it, or when we tap on it, we're taken to the edit profile page that enables us to edit both our display name as well as our user bio. So this is what the final version of that's going to look like. So it's going to consist of up at the top an app bar, a custom app bar with the title edit profile and then this check mark icon button that will enable us to go to the previous screen to the back to profile. And then for the body of the page, we're going to have once again our photo URL and then a couple of inputs with our display name and our bio automatically populated. So we're going to need to fetch our current user once again within this page. So we're going to be able to edit these two values and for our display name we want to make sure that it's not less than three characters. We want to have a valid display name and for our bio we want to make sure it's not too long. And if this passes validation then we can update our profile by tapping on the update profile button. We're going to get a little snack bar which you can see at the bottom. It says profile updated. And then finally we'll have a logout button to be able to log out, log out of our app completely. So right now let's take care of creating our edit profile button and push to the edit profile page and create its basic structure. So we're going to head down to where we're executing build profile button. Remember that in that function we we're just returning a text widget and instead from this widget we're first going to provide a conditional where we want to see if we're viewing our own profile. So if we're viewing our own profile, we should show the edit profile button. So how are we going to determine that? Well, we need to compare the current user's ID with the profile ID that's being passed to profile. So let's create within profile state a final string variable called current user ID. And we can get the current user ID from our home import. Note that it's better to pass down a given value as an argument to a widget. However, it is possible to just import home in order to get our current user reference. So we can get the current user's ID by saying current user. We'll use our null aware operator once again and get the ID property off of that. And then we can head back down. We'll head back down to build profile button and we'll create a variable here that has a value of a boolean called is profile owner. And we'll check to see if the current user ID is equal to widget dot profile ID. And if that's the case, if that's true, then we're going to return the result of another function called build button. So we're going to create a dedicated function just like we did for build count column because we're going to have some repetition here. There's going to be a number of cases where we're going to have different buttons that we want to pass different information to. As I mentioned, there's going to be a follow button and an unfollow button for profiles that have other users. So let's create this build button function above and it's going to accept two values which will provide as named arguments one called text which will be a string this is just the label of the button and then another of type function that'll be a function what we want to perform when this button's pressed so the text for this button will be edit profile and the function will be one called edit profile and we'll just create that above build button. So build button is going to return a container so within this container widget we'll have first a some padding on the top 
So edge insets only top will be set to 2.0. Its child will be a flat button. For its on pressed, we'll set that to the function that we're passing through, edit profile in this case. The child will be another container. And we're going to decorate it with the decoration argument. I'll be set to the box decoration class. And for its color, we'll use blue, so colors.blue. We'll give it a border with border.all, where the border color is going to be the same, blue. And we'll give it a border radius as well. We'll use border radius dot circular with a value of 5.0. Then for this container, we'll set alignment. We want to use alignment dot center and that is to center our the child of this container, which is going to be a text widget. I want to center that in both directions. And text is going to accept the text that we're passing into the function. And for the style, we'll use text style. And the color of the text will be colors.white. And the font weight will be font weight dot bold. And finally, the width of the container and therefore the button will be 250 and the height will be 27.0. So let's take a look at the result. So we have a rounded blue edit profile button. And when we tap on it, we want to go to the edit profile page. So for edit profile within this function, we know what to do in order to push to a given page, how to dynamically create a route. We use navigator.push to push to a route that we'll create. First we need to pass in context, then we'll make a route again with material page route, which has a builder function in the parameters. We'll provide context, which is required, and we'll return from it our edit profile page, which we'll make sure to import. And remember that on the edit profile page, we need to fetch the current user once again. So we'll pass down the current user ID to do so. We'll add another named argument. So let's head to edit profile. We'll create that argument, a final string called current user ID pass that to our edit profile constructor. And we'll begin by using this current user ID to fetch the user that it's linked to. We want to do that just once when our state is initialized. So we know to use init state, where we'll execute a function called get user, which is going to be responsible for making this request. Get user will be async. And first of all, we want to keep track of loading state within edit profile state. We want to show a loading spinner when we're fetching our user. So we'll have a Boolean called is loading set initially to false, but we'll set that to true when we're beginning to fetch our user. So here we can say await users ref, which will import dot document and provide the current user ID from widget.currentuserid.get. We'll put the result in a variable called doc of type document snapshot. We'll need to import Cloud Firestore for that type. Then we're going to deserialize our document. So we'll need the user model to get from document. We'll pass in doc, put the result in a variable, and we're going to initialize or declare this variable in state. It's going to be a user variable of type user, and we'll update this value when we get it. Then kind of jumping ahead, we're going to have a couple of controllers that are responsible for controlling the text within these two inputs, display name and bio. So let's make those in state as well. We'll have a text editing controller a type text editing controller with the variable name display name controller and we'll create that widget 
and we'll do the same for our bio controller, what we'll call our bio controller, which will have the same type. So once we get and deserialize our user data, we're going to set display name controller dot text to user dot display name to put the user's display name in the input immediately, and then we'll set bio controller dot text to user dot bio, and then finally we'll set state to make oops, to make is loading false. Okay, so now we're ready to build out both the app bar and the body of edit profile. So we'll use a scaffold to do that. So we'll return that from build. So for our custom app bar, it's going to have a background color of white, so we'll use colors.white going to have a title so we'll use a text widget and we'll have the text edit profile for style it's going to have the color colors dot black then for the icon button that's going to be displayed with the help of an actions list so we'll have an icon button the icon that we'll use using the icon constructor will be icons.done for its size that will be 30 the color green then for its on pressed we want to go back to the profile page and we can do that with the opposite of navigator.push which is navigator pop we just have to pass in context put that on the icon button so now we have our app bar and for our body we're first going to check to see if is loading is true so we'll add a ternary if it is we want to return our circular progress we'll make sure to import progress.dart to get it and otherwise we're going to have a list view we'll return a list view where it's children are going to consist of first a container where its child will be a column we can put basically everything within a single column here starting with our avatar so we'll have children then we'll space things out with padding where we'll use edge insets only to set padding on both the top that'll be 16 and on the bottom it'll be 8 and for padding's child we'll use a circle avatar where for its background image once again we'll use the cache network image provider widget which will import and we'll use the photo URL from user.photo URL. And the radius of this is going to be 50.0. Then after this first padding widget, we'll have another one where its padding value is going to be edge insets all set to 16. And for its child, it'll be a column widget where its children will consist of our two inputs display name and bio. So we're going to create two separate functions to return the widgets for each of these. First one called build display name field and another called build bio field. So they're both basically going to consist of the same things. For both of them we'll return a column widget and this is going to first have a cross axis alignment value of cross axis alignment dot start and for its children we'll have another padding widget where padding will be on top and that'll be set to 12 for its child we'll use the text 
display name where for its style we'll set its color to gray then after padding we'll have our text field where for the display name controller for the dis uh, the controller of the display name field will be set to display name controller then for its decoration we use input decoration that class to set the hint text of the input to update display name and then let's copy this entire function and paste it in underneath and this is going to be our build bio field. We're just going to change the text to bio instead of display name and the hint text to update bio. And then finally we're going to create the two buttons that we see underneath update profile and logout. So after our closing padding parenthesis in our build function we're going to add a raised button where for its on pressed we'll just print update profile data for now and for its child we'll have a simple text widget the text update profile and for its style we'll set the color to the primary color, so theme dot of context dot primary color. Then the font size will be twenty, and the font weight font weight dot bold. And then last, after raised button, we'll have padding, wrapping our flat button, which will be for logout. So the padding is going to be on all sides and it's going to have a value of 16. The child will be a flat button dot icon. So we'll have an icon within it along with text. On pressed will be for now just the print line log out. The icon itself using the icon constructor will be icons dot cancel with the color colors.red and the label again with the text widget the text logout and for its style use text style the color that will be red and its font size 20 so now let's save everything format things a bit We'll check out the result. Let me click on Edit Profile. Might need to do a hot restart. We're taken to Edit Profile. The app bar looks good. We see our image. We see display name. Looks like there's an error with bio, but we see our update profile and logout buttons. So for bio, I used the wrong controller. In fact, that should be the bio controller and once we save that we see its text is empty which is just as it should be and now we're ready to add functionality to actually update these values for our currently authenticated users document in Firestore